Mike's doing? Yeah, Mike's progressing. Uh, he's still day to day, and I think we're sh trying to get him out there on the practice field at some point this week, but kind of day to day right now. Then any updates on uh, Corey and Trey? Yeah, Corey's in the concussion protocol, and Trey is uh, day to day with his MCL injury. And Trey will get back to practice today or later in the week. Uh, we're shooting for it, but I think we're gonna, you know, be careful with it. You know, it's been, um, you know, he's been just. A pure example of toughness for us, and we just want to make sure we get that thing a lot of rest. It's that point of year where you're going to try and do that anyway, so got to try and get that thing back. Are you guys changing up the practice routine this week at all? Um, no. Oh, is there like a walkthrough, or do you go on Thursday? Oh, we're just we're going to do walkthrough into the practice on Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah, to just get the guys out a little bit sooner okay. for the day. Same amount of practice, but just get them out sooner. Okay, so you haven't like changed like walkthroughs only or? No, 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 like not yet. You've got another night game. Are there challenges that go beyond you know, the norm when you have to play at 5 o'clock instead of 1 or uh, this The game we're playing this week's a day game, so that's the one we're going to focus on. Uh, is there any update on Nas? Uh, Nas is day-to-day -day with his thumb. And then any update on, on Joey for the grass every press conference? Uh, yeah, Joey is uh, at the same point progressing well uh, in the building. Uh, it's been good to see him and uh, still um, going to be some time before he's out there at practice. Any, I was going to say, any expectation as far as like a, a week you're you know, looking at as far as him returning to practice or is it going to be? No expectation. Um, just um, keep making progress, and um, when that moment comes, we'll be ready for him. Could his return um, be contingent at all on what, where you guys are for him in the playoff race? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I, I don't think that's his mindset or ours. Um, he's making good progress, and we'll see when he gets back out there. We're going to make sure that he's, he's ready to go, though, and be the Joey that we know he is. Can you assess how Will Clapp's done at center because he's stepped in there now for a couple games, probably more than you guys envisioned at the beginning of the year? Yeah, game. exemplary, uh, exemplary uh, from a backup center. Um, that's why we went and got him. You know, the familiarity with Joe and, and Brendan was, was really significant. Uh, and then just much like a backup quarterback is, I think that relationship with the starting center is very important. The relationship with quarterbacks, he's got a great way about him. And um, he's, he's come in and played quality football for us and given us an opportunity uh, to win a bunch of games. So we're glad we have him. And um, one of those kind of underrated offseason signings for, for our football team. Looking at this Raiders offense, it seems like they've really leaned into the running game since you guys last saw him. Josh Jacobs is putting up some pretty big numbers. Yeah. What, what challenges do they present from a run standpoint? They know how to run the ball. They have an identity. And they have tight ends who can block, which makes the running game go a lot better. Um, and they've got an elite runner that breaks a lot of tackles. Uh, you can't block everything perfectly. You got to have running backs that can create uh, on their own. And, and Josh is as good as anybody at that because he can make you miss and he can run through you. And um, he's a very dangerous player. So they've. Um, really established, uh, you know, consistency in that phase, and you know he's leading the NFL right now. And last week was a good example of of why they've been playing well offensively. What are the points of emphasis that you sort of give to your defense as far as stopping him and stopping him? Strike blocks, um, pursue the football, tackle, and do it consistently down in and down out. Yeah, Lindsay, I, I love the guys that we're coaching. I think the guys that we've joined up with, you know, Tyler Davison, uh, we've had Joe G and Bray uh, before, but um, I think that those guys have fit right in. And I thought last week, um, all, you know, all three of them played well for us in that game. Uh, and so they're just, uh, they're the right type of guys that you want, you know, when, when all this type of stuff happens. You got to have players that you can count on, that, that you can depend on. And, um, you know, all three of those guys have really fit in well to our football team, and um, I like coaching them for sure. A lot has transpired since you guys last played the Raiders in the season opener. Just what have you learned about the team that maybe you didn't know going into that first meeting against them, just in, you know, playing them now in the third team? Yeah, we just got, I mean, we've got a lot of players on, on, on my list here that weren't even on our team in that game. So that's just how the NFL is. So both teams have changed significantly since that first game. That's how the NFL is. And, um, you know, it's, it's what you do, you know, in that space to improve. And I think both of these teams are in, you know, similar space where I feel like we can improve a lot down the stretch. And, um, you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a big game because they're playing well and so are we. We're at the point of the season where a lot of times your opponent is kind of in a make or break 
situation where, you know, their, their season could, you know, be over essentially if they lose. The intensity of those types of games, what, what's that like? It's just how it is in the second half of the season in the NFL. But this is a quality team. We knew that the, f the first game that we played them. Um, you know, you can see it in their record. And, um, you know, you look closer to that record and, and how the games have actually been played. And you know, I think they've lost six games by, you know, one score or less. And, and so uh, you know that this is a dangerous team. The first time you played them, they're still a dangerous team. They're very well coached. They have a lot of high-quality personnel, a lot of experience. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a road game, a division road game. So um, we're going to have to be at our best. And um, much like that first game, we have full respect for them. Well, I'm not going to speak for anybody else. I'll just speak for myself. But it, no, it'll have zero impact on the game. On Monday, when we were talking about the run defense, you mentioned just creating more two-on-ones on the edge of the way, potentially you know, eliminating some of those outside runs. Is that just a function of getting more bodies like in the box and on the line of scrimmage? Or there are different ways where you can make that happen without you know, giving away too much? Money? Yeah, no, I mean, I think um, you know, you just there's going to be some design scheme that gets to the perimeter. And if it gets there, you don't want it to come down to one guy. If you study the NFL and where a lot of the explosive plays happen, it happens when a very good running back is on a DB. And um, what you try to do is create as much population to the football so that doesn't happen. And that's what I mean by two-on-ones, the pursuit. Um, and you know, trying to get, that's why you got to strike blocks and get off blocks. And um, sometimes you can fit the run perfectly, but hey, if that design gets it to one guy, maybe it can go a long way if you miss that tackle. So that's why it's important that not only you fit it well, but you get multiple people at the point of attack. Um, so if there is a miss, you can you know, correct it. So um, you know, just, uh, that's just run defense one-on-one -on -one in the NFL. I'm not telling you anything that any other defensive coach wouldn't tell you, but uh, you know, run defense is a team operation. And I think um, you know, that's what's lost to sometimes think run game is about, hey, just the front. Well, it's not. You know, it's just like in, on offense, they say, like, okay, sacks is just about the O line. Well, it's not. It's about your quarterback. It's about your protection plan. Like, there's a whole bunch of things. You know, football is such a great team game that way, and you guys cover it every single day. And, and hopefully, there's a reason why coaches tell you that, you know, because it's true. And uh, you can't get bored of, of, of people telling you that because um, that's the way it is. And run defense is no exception. Uh, speaking of sacks, uh, Justin has been sacked nine times in the last two games. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, you know, just staying out of known passing situations uh, where, hey, you're on the road, it's loud, you're playing against quality rushers, um, you know, you multiply your chances of, of, you know, putting yourself at risk. A lot of designer groupings that go into rushing the quarterback and covering pressures, that gets amplified when, number one, you're behind or behind the chains, third and long. Um, so just staying ahead of the chains, um, getting the lead, uh, playing with good pace and, you know, then obviously, you know, everyone's working together from the protection plan, receivers running their routes on time. And, um, you know, there's no one better than Justin at uh, protecting the football, uh, feeling the rush. And, and sometimes, um, and it hasn't happened to him as much, but sometimes it's good to take a sack in the NFL. You know, it's sometimes it's good to, 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 you know, to take a sack and be protected uh, with the football um, in turn, instead of forcing something to happen that's not there. And so, each sack has a story, and you got to make sure you look at it. And uh, you know, I just think the one thing that Justin's proven um, is that he's an outstanding decision maker, and that he's really strong with the ball. And I think, although we've had nine sacks, we've had zero fumbles, and that's important um, to be strong with the football. And that's how you win games in the league is protecting the football and taking it away. So we've done a good job of that, and uh, we'll, we'll keep working hard at protecting the passer. What have you seen out of the, the Raiders' defense, metrically? They're among the, the bottom of the league. They've got a lot of good personnel. Chandler and Max are really good. I've got a lot of respect for Blau Nichols, who I coached in Chicago. He's really good inside. Denzel Perriman, who was here, is you know Pro Bowl player. Uh, I think you know an outstanding inside linebacker. Uh, and then they've got some quality secondary players. I mean, Rakiusen, you know, my one of my good friends coached him in Indianapolis. 
Uh, and Trevor um, Morig is, you know, a very good up and coming young safety. You know, I think that we've got a lot of respect for him. So they've got good personnel. They've been banged up. Um, they're very well coached. Patrick Graham's an outstanding coach. Um, so we've got full respect for them. It's been tough every time we've played against Patrick and his scheme. And um, it's, uh, you know, the first game was a tough one against them. And uh, led by Max and Chandler, those guys are as good as it gets. You know, there, there, there's another outstanding football team playing in Los Angeles. I'm, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on what Lincoln Riley has done. If you're how close you're, you've been monitoring that team and their success. I'm, I haven't been monitoring uh, much of college football at all. You said a couple weeks ago that it's hard to articulate the tax put on Derwin during the week. Yeah. Can you? <laughs> it just, I mean, just describe. Yeah, well, he's doing the job of six other players. So if you just said, okay, if, you know, one player doing that job, you, you would have, like, an expectation. But he's doing the job of six other players. And um, that's what makes him so valuable. And so mentally, there's just a huge tax in understanding what to do and how to do it. And then you have to understand what's going on on the other side of the ball and that implication in six other roles. And then you get into the situational part of it, first and second down, third down red area, two minute, you know, you're just, you're really asking this guy to do a lot. And that's what makes him so unique. And, you know, last week I thought was a great example of how special he is because you saw him play the ball in the deep part of the field. It was the first time he has got on, on the board from an interception standpoint. He's been close several times this year, but he's that, he's that rare guy that can do it all. He can rush, um, he can play the run, play in zone, cover man to man in the slot. He can match up on guys. Um, and he's the heartbeat of your team, and I say it all the time. But you know, last week was a signature play because it's him on Hopkins, and Hopkins is as good of a receiver as there is in the pros. And you know, Durham was able to knock that one down for us. And and you know, you need those signature plays in big games like that, you know, to give you the energy, give you the lift. And you've heard me say that, but your premium players in the, in this league have got to make premium plays for you because uh, it really ignites your football team. In the basketball term, though, is he the closest thing to a stat stuffer? Yeah, you know, when I was with Jalen, I felt like, you know, similar, um, you know, but he's like that LeBron James type player where he can just do everything. You know, the thing that makes LeBron so unique is that he plays all five positions and he plays them all at a premium level. He can do everything at the highest level that you could ask anybody to do. Um, point guard, two guard, scoring, three point, you know, guard any position. Um, you know, post-up game, you know, transition. I mean, you name it, LeBron can do it. And that's something that's rare with Derwin. And that's why everyone reveres him that way because everyone knows that there's not many people that can do that. So he's still improving. Um, that's the thing sometimes with, with players like him is he's still got a lot, you know, of capacity to grow. And that's what we're focusing on with him is all the little things that he can get better at um, that can help his game and make even more plays and uh, even get even more trigger out of him. And um, that's what we're searching. And you know, Ronaldo and uh, Derek and Tommy are doing such a good job. And, you know, we, uh, we expect them to continue to play well for us. Will, uh, being a key offseason guy, would, would you put J.K. Scott in that same yeah. category? Um, I certainly would. Player of the week, but how much of a weapon has he been for you guys? Yeah, I certainly would. You know, just uh, definitely a weapon. Uh, really, I think, just changed the way our special teams um, has operated just in terms of the confidence that you have in, in field position and, um, you know, you understand the hidden yardage that's available to you when you can um, punt the football like we have and how that affects, you know, scoring the football. And, uh, you know, when you can, when you can change the field like, like he has. And um, I, I think he's given our rookie gunners a ton of confidence um, because he gives them time to do their job well. Um, his operation time gives our protection, you know, to, you know takes stress off them. Um, and he's got to continue to improve. He's another guy. He's a young player in the league. He's got to continue to improve for us, um, but definitely been a big asset for us this, this year. How much has J.K. affected maybe some of the fourth down calls in the plus side of the field where maybe in plus one win probability last year you would have gone for it, where this year you punted it a couple times? Yeah, I mean, I think it has an impact. I think that and your defense, you know, I think both those things go into it. You know, when you know that you can, you know, when you know that, it's not going to go into the end zone because you know what that reality is when you punt it and, and it goes into the end zone. You know, like what you just lost, okay? And so when you have full confidence that it's going to get inside the 10, the 15, you know, you know what that does for the flow of the game. You know what that does for the other team. 
Um, and so, you know, it's, it's definitely played a factor into it. But, um, you know, I think it's, one of been, it's been one of those things that it's allowed us to be a more complete football team. And uh, that was our whole goal coming into the season was be a more complete team. And um, our special teams is uh, continuing to improve. Uh, it's nowhere near where, it, where it's going to be, you know, where, but we're heading in the right direction. Your offense hasn't scored a touchdown in the third quarter since week five. You know, every third quarter is different. And even in this past third quarter, you drove it all the way down the field, got into goal to go, and just weren't able to convert there. But yeah. how much of a point of emphasis is, is that for you, to be better coming out of halftime? Obviously, like the middle eight is something that you talk about a lot. Like, yeah. How much of an emphasis is that for your offense? No, huge, huge, Daniel, huge. Um, Huge, because it changes the the momentum of the game. Just like the you know, like a couple of these recent games where we come out and score the ball early, um, and what that does for your team. When you come out and score the ball, then it completely changes the feeling of the team. And so um, the emphasis is going to continue uh, to be on the explosions, staying away from negative plays, and when you get into the red area, converting your opportunities. You have to score touchdowns, and um, you know we're working hard as a group. Our offense is. Um, you know, done a really good job, I think, of staying together this season. And uh, I thought last week's game was a good example of that, uh, working through some adjustments. And that's what I want to see as a coach. I want to see uh, those in-game adjustments that mean a lot. And I thought last week we did a good job of that. And um, But we got to continue to start fast both halves, for sure. Good points.